63 Corvette here. Some modifications we had to make. It came to us with a roaster shop chassis and they told him that he couldn't do what he wanted to do with the LT4 and the eight speed and we did it. We had to move it up two inches to get clearance to the ground. When we get done here, we'll give you a shot of the bottom of the car, but we moved the transmission and the engine up and we made accommodations to doing that by cutting the floor out and building a whole new tunnel. But in turn of building the tunnel, we also had to build a new console and dash to accommodate everything else that we want to put in here. Keep in mind, we made molds of everything here. And so a lot of time went into this and everything has been tooled. And what you see right now is out of our mold. There's been nothing else done to it other than trim the edges and set it in the car. And that's how much passion we put into making a part. And now with the molds, we can make these parts over and over. On the inside of the roof, we made a new headliner that has the moldings built in it, along with the styling line down the middle of it that mirrors the outside of the car. Then in the back, we made a one-piece panel that has that same styling line that wraps around inside the windows and goes up into the window all the way to the back. As you can see, this headliner is carbon fiber. We made our molds to infuse, so we can infuse the headliner. We can infuse this back uh, window molding if we want to do all carbon fiber or if you want to accent just part of it in carbon fiber and paint the other part of it. That's pretty much up to your design of when you're doing an interior. We're trying to accomplish to make this some changes in here. This was designed around another car that's working great into here. In turn, this was made to convert a 64 to 7 into a split window. So we have an insert that goes in the back window. This is our trim. So you can see the tunnel that we've built to accommodate our 8-speed automatic. To keep ground clearance, everything's been moved up. So we made a new tunnel, and in turn, we knew we had to bring our dash up. This is the dash that we make. It's a three-piece mold, and this is out of the mold. This is the finish you get out of our mold. Our center console was made to match up to our dash. We put a little compartment inside of here, somewhere to stash stuff. With the higher tunnel, there's not a lot of room, but there's some room in there. There's also inserts that go on both sides of the console. I just didn't put them in here because I don't have the dash or the glove box in here. Okay, just to show you the dash out of the car, it has all the factory original bolting locations across the top. You'll still use the rivets down the side. The glove box and the dash will both bolt in as it did factory original. And you see the construction of the back side of it. Just to give you an idea of how big the tunnel is. We've ate up a lot of space, but there's why we had to do what we did. Now keep in mind that our center console and our dash will still fit inside of an original floor of a car. So if you have a, a, a different design that you're doing and it doesn't have the big eight-speed automatic in it, that dash and console will still work. Okay, underneath the car, just to give you another explanation, getting Clarence transmission pan and engine oil pan. As you can see, we have plenty of clearance. Always been an issue with these cars when you put them down on the ground, you lose this clearance. We have plenty of clearance. And as a matter of fact, our exhaust is just a little bit lower than our transmission pan. But to do that, we had to sacrifice room inside the cockpit. And I think we've covered all of our bases on that. Thank you.